Joshua chapter 24 is where I'm going this morning. Joshua chapter number 24. And uh, if someone doesn't have a Bible around you, if you don't mind just uh, letting them look on with you, that would be wonderful. And Joshua chapter number 24. And if you can go there, and uh, Joshua chapter 24. <clears throat> Joshua 24, and I'm going to pray, and then we're going to start reading down through here, and we're going to read verse number 1 through verse number 13. Joshua chapter 24, and verse number 1 through verse number uh, 13. And uh, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we begin this morning, I'm asking you to do a work in our hearts and in, and in our lives. Lord, everyone here needs to hear from heaven this morning, and Lord, every one of us, as we uh, sit and we listen, may we come to a conclusion at the end of the sermon uh, that, that, Lord, we totally understand that you are on the throne, you have always been on the throne, that you are keenly aware of everything that is transpiring in our life. And, Lord, that we are here at this point, uh, not uh, as a result of anything, but as a result of you. And God, we ask this morning that you would speak to our hearts. We are not here for any other purpose but to hear from heaven. And God, on this mid-September Sunday, may you do something in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, just by way of introduction, I, uh, before I give the introduction, we'll give all the announcements at the end of the service, and, and I would ask that you kind of stick around for those announcements. Joshua chapter 24 and verse number 1, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem. And by the way, as we go through here, this will be the last time that Joshua is able to address the children of Israel. So everything that we're getting ready to read right now is leading up to Joshua's departure. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called the elders of Israel for their heads and for their judges and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood and led them throughout, the, uh, throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau, Mount Seir, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And ye came into the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen under the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and covered them, and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hands. And ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Gershkeshite, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hands. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwelled in them, and of the vineyards and olive yards, which ye planted not, do ye eat. This is a very interesting passage of Scripture, and I trust you didn't get lost in the reading of it. But in this passage of Scripture, you're going to find out if you kind of want to write at the very top of Joshua 24, 700 years. What we just read in 15 verses took 700 plus years for it to transpire. 
God called the leaders, and so Joshua, he called the leaders together. Because Joshua, you're getting ready to leave, and they're getting ready to enter into a new era in who they are. But I want to rehearse to them in short 15 verses, 700 plus years of a journey of this family. He said, uh, we started out to where we started with Abraham, and we kind of went from there. And as he walked down this journey, he was kind of rehearsing the celebrities of the family, the kind of personalities that the family was based upon. He said, you have Abraham, and you know how I took him out of his country. And then I gave to him uh, Isaac, and then you had Jacob and Esau, and then you had Moses and Aaron. And then you had the dark days. Then you had the plagues in Egypt. And then we kind of moved on to where a king, do you remember the king that tried to destroy you and even wanted to hire a personality called Balaam to curse you, but I, I wouldn't let that happen. Then do you remember how I sent a hornet? You had your bow and you had your sword. You were ready to go to battle, but I sent the hornet to take it out. And then if you remember, uh, I, I gave you a land that you live in that you get to enjoy. That, that you truly didn't work for and you live in cities you didn't build and you eat of vineyards you never planted and you eat of olive yards that you had nothing to do with and I gave you that. I'm going to preach this morning on that one word, I. Ladies and gentlemen, it's easy to get lost in the journey of your heritage and to think that the personalities and the dark days and those lonely days and the valleys and if we are not careful, we are determining our future by what has happened to us in our past, and we can get bogged down. You know what God was coming then to say? God was saying this, I took, verse 3, I gave, verse 4, I sent, verse 5, I plagued, verse 5, I did, verse 5, I brought, in verse 6, I have done, in verse 7, I brought, uh, in verse 8, I gave, I destroyed in verse 8, I would not, I delivered in verse 10, I delivered in verse 11, I sent in verse 12, I have given in verse 12, in verse 13. You know what's really crazy is when I was reading those 15 verses, I just got intrigued with the letter I and the word I, and I just started circling it. And I, and I came to this conclusion, my heritage is not based on who is in my heritage and what my past is. You know what my heritage, you know, is based on? God. God. Please listen to me. You're going to have to come to grips with who has been part of the path to where you're at right now. And you're quickly going to have to come to grips with the Abrahams. And you're going to have to look at the Jacobs and the Isaacs and the Esau's. I'm glad that the Bible's not being written in 2016 because listen to me, my, I don't want to make the book. Somebody said the other day, don't you wish you could make the book? No. You know, the best place to be is where Wikipedia knows nothing about you. <laughs> Amen on that one. When somebody starts writing about your family, just leave me out of it. I don't want to make anybody's family. I just leave me out of it. And if you were honest, you wouldn't want anybody putting you in anything either. Because, well, you know, we just need to be honest about our relatives. Oh, I'm so begging my family. Don't be honest about me. I don't, don't, I don't want to see it. But here's my sermon for this morning. Listen to this. Your journey cannot be defined by the people, places, or things on your journey. We, we can't do it. It needs to be defined by this. Because there's a God in heaven that stands above anything that's part of your resume. And God says, turn that mic on. You know what God says? Attention. Uh, Abraham. And God starts directing in your life and in mine. Go ahead and turn it off. And you listen to me. There is a God that brings the Abrahams into who you are. He brings the trickster Jacob into who you are. He brings the older brother Esau into who you are. He brings times and places that should have destroyed you and God quickly orchestrated it and raised kings only to defeat them in your life. My friend, you listen to me. 
As I head to the true, true truth I want to get to this morning, but we have to wade through your leg- legacy and who you are and where you came from. Because there's a lot of people that in 15 verses, 700 plus years in your life, you probably could raise to the top people in your life. And you probably have people of great faith only to find out that they truly didn't play it by the book. And you may have people in your life that you thought, man, they tricked their way through life, that God said, I'm going to change their name and make them Israel. You and I have to come to grips with the who's in our life in order to be able to decide what are we going to do. If you were to tell your story, what would your story include? A failed father? If you were to tell your story, what would your story include? An out-of-control mother? If you were to tell your story, what would your story include? A spiritual leader who did you wrong? I mean, what would your story include? Dark nights? What would it include? This should not have happened, and this should not have happened, and that shouldn't have taken place. I'm going to tell you right now, when I read this, I came away with just just an overview that said this, no matter what is in my story, it doesn't matter. God was always had the ability to orchestrate it to where I arrived right here in my life, married three wonderful children, a son-in-law, three beautiful grandchildren, a church I love to pastor, a job I love to do. I love to preach his word. I love goofing off with people. I love shaking hands. I love hugging babies. This is going to sound terrible. I love doing funerals. I love doing weddings. I love going to the hospital. And no matter what is my 700-year history, God orchestrated it all so that I could enjoy right now. And there's only one or two people, and I'm continuing the theme from last week, victor or victim, on this one thought. Listen to me. I. If you can see God's hand in it all, and through it all, and what you have right now. You know, listen to me. I'm looking at a bunch of families who are together. You may be sitting close because you're cold, but I'm going to take that you love each other. I, I truly am looking at families. I, I was going through the balcony this morning, and Miss Sarah uh, Duckett had the, uh, the uh, huge task of corralling six and seven children uh, around her. And as I was shaking hands in the balcony, I thought to myself, what a wonderful sight. Now, they're not all Sarah matched children. They don't have six or seven. But, but I thought to myself, what a wonderful sight. What a wonderful sight. I, I see families sitting together, and I, I see husbands and wives sitting together. And listen to me. As far as I know, you've got it good right now. And as far as I know, God has blessed you right now, but he had to orchestrate it all. And God was saying at the end of the day, I set it up. Now, you either have one or two ways you're going to live. You're either going to live with the Abrahams, Jacob, and Isaac, and Esau's, and the Balaks, and the Balaams, and the cursing, and the, or you're going to live above it and say, regardless of what is in my past, God orchestrated it all so that I could be enjoying life right now. And until we rise above that, you and I will never enjoy it. Listen to me. Can I, can I just be pastor right now? It is a shame that people who name the name of Christ have such a low opinion about God. And have such a low opinion about life. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the belly aching. I'm tired of the complaining. I'm tired of the down mouth. I'm tired when you ask a Christian how they're doing. Well, you know, I just... Listen to me. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Turn it on. When you and I get to the point to where we understand that God steps up to the podium. And when he raises and he goes, go. That no matter what is going on down here, he has the ability to stop. In our lives, you can go ahead and turn off. In our lives, it comes down to this one thought. Go further on in Joshua chapter 24, if you don't mind, because down in Joshua chapter 24, he rehearses 700 <clears throat> plus years. And then he comes down to Joshua 24 and he says this, Now, your outlook on the past concerning God. Look at it. Joshua 24, 15, very famous verse. 
and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Can we stop right there? You know what Joshua was saying? I, God just took us through 700 years. Now, if you can turn around and look at that 700 years and say God was bad when he gave us Abraham. God was bad when he sent us to Egypt. God was bad when he put us through the plagues. God was bad when he sent Balak to almost destroy us. God was bad. And let me tell you something. If our, if our journey, we look back and it's the bad 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 and it's the bad. You know what God, Joshua was telling? Okay, fine. If you turn around and you see nothing but the evil from serving the Lord, Lord, then you go ahead and serve somebody else. And it's about time that you 20-something-year-olds and you 30-something-year-olds and you 40-something-year-olds decided either he was bad to us back then and it's time to go serve somebody else or, bless God, he was good to us back there and he gave us what we have right now and it's time to keep serving him. And I don't know about you, but if you keep reading there, I like the last part. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Look at this. But as for me and my what? House. Listen to this. Kelly, can I get you to come here? RG, come here. Come with mama. Help mama. Do you know what? Can I just put it in the vernacular? down to where we live. You know what Joshua was saying? I'm not counting Jordan because he graduates from seminary this May and who knows what he's going to do. <laughs> hint, hint. And uh, <laughs> listen to me. 700 years, Joshua said. Listen to this. He said, I have been part of the same family you've been a part of. He said, I too have Abraham to my father. I too have a forefather named Esau. I too have a Jacob who was a trickster and a conniver. I too have those relatives back there. My family heritage is just like your family heritage. I too can look back at the times. You know what he said? But I'm not going to look at the bad times. I'm going to look at the God who stepped up and orchestrated to get us to where we're at right now. And you listen to me. As your pastor, I am not going to look at those in the orchestra who hit a bad note every once in a while. I'm going to look at the conductor who has taken every mishap in this spiritual family and made it great to this point. And if nobody else, Joshua literally was drawing a line in the sand and saying, me and my house, we're not going to live off the personalities of the family. We're going to keep our eyes on the one who conducts it all. And I know this, and I wrote down three things. If he took care of the problems of the past, he'll take care of the problems of today. Well, we don't need a generation that bails ship on this kind of living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Longview Baptist Temple is a conservative Baptist church. We have always been a conservative Baptist church, and we will continue to be a conservative Baptist church, and this is not the time to change what we believe because we've had problems in the past. You listen to me. Our problems in the past, God was able to orchestrate, and God was able to bring us through. Listen to me, my friend. He'll take us through in my life and in my children's life and in my grandchildren's life, and I have full confidence not in the players but in the God. Who brought us all the way through. The second thing I wrote down was this. He fought our battles in the past. He'll fight our battles now. Do you know this is not the time, my friend, to all of a sudden shift and start fighting our own battles. No, 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 no. You don't understand. If God was able to send hornets. In fact, I want you to go back and look, look at what he said there in their history. Look at verse 12. Look at it. Joshua 24 and verse 12. And I sent hornets before you which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy what? Bow. 
My friend, and I'll take a couple amens right now from some of you men, but you listen to me. It's not our sword and it's not our bow that's going to win any battle that we've got going on. You know what it is? It's God that fights our battles. And let's not get sidetracked to where we feel like, well, you know, when somebody's got to step up and somebody's got to say something, that's a bunch of junk. Because this is God's house. This is God's church. He'll fight his own battles. And you and I always must remember this. That on the timeline of our spiritual family and your spiritual family, my spiritual family, may be dotted with people that have failed us. But for every failure, you got to admit, he used a lot of great people in our past to get us to where we are right now. Who, who in your spiritual heritage, my friend, taught you your morals? Who taught you how to read your Bible? Who taught you how to win a soul to Christ? Who taught you how to love your wife, how to love your husband, how to love your children? You know what Joshua is saying? The same God that, that solved our problems is the same God who fought our battles. And the third thing I want to tell you is this. He didn't bring us this far to change. He didn't bring us this far to change. Do you know I have no idea what God's going to do with Jordan? I have no idea. But I can tell you this, I come from a long heritage of people in the gray family living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come from a long heritage of it. And, and, and I am not going to forsake the Christianity that I'm enjoying right now. And I hope to God that Jordan and Deanna do not forsake the Christianity that was handed to them. But I think it comes from, can I just be honest? I think it comes from the mouth and the heart of the parents whether or not our children continue down the road. We either can focus on the members of the orchestra or we can just rise above it and we can just simply say, Son, daughter, lift your eyes. Look at the God because he has a way of keeping everything going. You know what he said? As for me and my house. I'm going to ask you as I end, and it was a short sermon this morning on purpose because we have Brother Ortiz preaching tonight. <laughs> Are you dwelling on the God who has brought you this far? Or on all the hurt that's brought you this far? When you look at God, then you do automatically say three things. Can I give them to you? When you look at God, you automatically say three things. One, thank God for the Abrahams. Thank God for the Abrahams. Let me tell you something. Those people who stepped out by faith and said, I'm going to a land that I don't even know where I'm going. Thank God for the Abrahams. Listen to me. If somebody hadn't stepped out in faith, you wouldn't be living in your faith right now. Somebody in your life had to step out and trust God for everything going on. And when they trusted God, you said, okay, okay, I think we can do it. Now, we've all not been perfect, but when you're looking at the, the eye brought us this far. God brought us this far. God orchestrated everything. There may have been family, but uh, when you're looking at the God, you know what you start saying? Thank God for the Abrahams in my life. The second thing you start saying is, I pray for the Jacobs in my life. Jacob was a trickster. And in your life and in my life, there are tricksters. But instead of talking about them, why don't you pray for them? You know, I preached a sermon uh, some time ago on don't be like one of those family members. And I, and I was joking about every family has that family member that when they show up to a family reunion, you're like, ooh, this is going to be interesting. Y'all are smiling right now, which just simply means this. Y'all got them too. And it's like, okay, okay. When you look at the family reunion, it's like, do we give them a family t-shirt? Do we even want them part of our family? Do we want somebody knowing that they're part of our family? Pray for the Jacobs. Number three, past performance has no bearing on your choice. Did you hear that? Past performance has no bearing on your choice. And you and I sitting here, when I got married, and Kelly and I got married on this platform 30 years ago this coming March, we became a family. We had to decide 
what kind of home we were going to have. And we decided a long time ago that we were going to look at the God who's orchestrating, not the players that are playing. And one of the best decisions we ever made was this. No matter what happened, when you get behind closed doors, you praise the God and forget the rest of the junk. If there's one secret to a home that you want, shut it down when you walk inside those doors and never, never, never become the kind of parent and become the kind of family member where you're talking about all that bad. You just simply shut it down and go, nope, here we're going to talk about the God that has been very, very good to us. 700 years, the I. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Thank you, have a seat. Help her down, RG. Don't push her down. Okay. <laughs> or Kelly, you help him down. That's what's going to happen. Listen very closely. Let's make sure that you're the kind of Christian that you raise, you rise above whatever is in your life. We've got the entire future ahead of us. I am more excited about our future right now. Y'all can wake up because we're coming to the end. I am more excited about our future right now than I have ever been. But it's going to take, listen to this as I close, it's going to take a great disposition by every member. And every member must come to the conclusion of this. Our focus is on God. And God is what this is all about. It's not about the Abrahams. It's not about the Isaacs. It's not about the Jacobs. It's not about the Esau's. It's not about the journey. It's not about any of that. It's about God. God will fix anything that needs to be fixed. God will straighten out anything that needs to be straightened out. When is the last time that you committed yourself to keep your eyes on the Lord? When you get frustrated with man, then that's because you're not looking at the God who can take care of it all. Put it all in the Lord's hand and let's see what he can do. Heavenly Father.